Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be reviewing Episode 6. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about, specifically because there were so many flashbacks and there was lots of Leviathan stuff, which is very important to talk about. Obviously, this episode was a Lena and Andrea episode, so we'll talk about that and how I felt about this episode in a minute. But if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So yeah, I liked this episode quite a lot. I thought it was one of the better episodes this season. I only think I disliked one episode this season, which was the episode when James left. I liked when James left, not because he left, but because it was very impactful. And there was a few things in the episode that I liked. So that was episode four, but yeah, I wasn't so hot on that. I really liked last week's episode and this week, I thought it was very good. I, I definitely really enjoyed it. There were some parts that I had some issues with, mainly to do with some of the dialogue and a little bit to do with Lena and her motivations, but we'll get to that once we get to it. So I've got a lot of notes, we're going to talk about this. So we begin the episode with Rip Roar in the DEO prison and the DEO is attacked by that same shadow. And it's a bit weird that they keep on calling her a shadow throughout the episode, considering you can see it's an actual human. She's got a mask on, she's got a costume on. Yeah, she can move through shadows, but I don't know why they kept on calling her, like, a shadow. But anyway, so we see Akrata for the first time. It's our first look at her, obviously, in the flesh, you know, where we can actually see her. Last time she was just purely a shadow when she killed that person. And so, yeah. Then we go on and we see Lena and Andrea and Andrea full on confronts Lena and tells her everything straight away. Maybe it was a bit too quick, I don't know. But anyway, so she betrays Leviathan is essentially what is set up at the start of this episode with Lena and her in present day. With her telling her everything, you know, I have to go to the DEO, break in, do this to get this person out because I need to get him away essentially. And so then flashbacks ensue, we get to see a young Lena and Andrea on a quest to find this medallion, that is sort of their mission that they want to do, the medallion of a crater. and these flashbacks are very cute, very fun, I really liked those brief scenes. Then we have Lex Luthor returning, so John Cryer returned in this episode, a brilliant surprise. I did not expect him to return before Crisis, obviously we know he's going to be in Crisis, but he actually filmed for this episode, which is super, super exciting and great to see because Lex was the best thing about last season. And so, yeah, it was a great surprise. We had this weird kind of Lena wig on, I'm not sure if it looked like a wig, she could have just done her hair up or something like that, but anyway, so it's a flashback. And so Lex is trying to murder Superman, but, you know, she refuses to help him in his mission to kill Superman. Then we go to another flashback, which is further forward in the future with our normal actors. We have this sort of Indiana Jones-like sort of adventure in the forest, you know, like, I guess, Dora the Explorer. That's what it reminded me of, because it's sort of like this mystical sort of you know, finding treasure and stuff like that, they go down, it's sort of like a jungle. I don't know, it kind of reminded me of both of those things. And we have her falling down a hole, that being Andrea. I found that maybe it was a little bit too easy to find, you know, it wasn't very well hidden. I don't know, that's obviously for the ease of the TV show, so they don't have to go on this sort of long mission. And so anyway, some dude shows up behind her, just out of nowhere, like a freaking ghost. And this is a Leviathan person, a Leviathan man, and he essentially f tells Andrea, you gotta do this to, you know, if you wanna, if you want your dad's company to continue and be successful. So she's essentially blackmailed into becoming a Krater. She steals the medallion, she gets these powers, these powers of, you know, being able to go through shadows and different things like that. So... I found that some of the bits in the episode, specifically to do with Lena, were a little bit melodramatic between the two of them, maybe a bit too over the top, I don't know if I believed all of it, but that's just a little nitpick. And so we get another Lex Luthor scene as the one that we saw last season with, you know, his first episode, we have various flashbacks like this episode, and we see him with Lena, but also we see the return of Jack, 
played by Raul Cooley. Not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but he was a nice addition to see back. Another nice surprise, so I really appreciated that they brought Lex and Jack back in this episode. Although Jack was only in one episode in season three, you know, it's a nice callback, and I enjoyed that scene quite a bit. So, yeah, he's with Lena. They are together, and, you know, he just walks in. So he's obviously working with her at this point until he's not which we'll talk about in a minute. So Lena and Andrea, this, like I said, really is the episode and she finds the medallion when they're in London, when Jack and Lena is in London. And again, I think maybe a few things in this episode could have been done a bit better that they weren't so obvious. It was literally on her neck. Like, I don't know why she's wearing it, just like plain on her neck. I know she wasn't expecting Lena, but I don't know, maybe that was a bit too obvious. But anyway, so yeah, she finds out about this and she goes on the, the normal Lena Luthor rant about, oh, you lied to me, I hate you, we're done. I get bored of that, and I know some of you guys do, like, especially with how she reacted to Supergirl, and how, you know, a lot on these CW shows, every time someone lies, that is the end of the world. You know, you're fucking done if you lie in the CW shows. So that's just a nitpick that everyone has, I find, because it's just way too easy to you know, someone lies, oh, screw you, like, there is no second thought about it, so, yeah, I think this episode has a great argument to say that Lena is actually a villain, seriously, like, she is right on that route to becoming a villain, but anyway, so, I'm, I'm not saying that, um, I'm not putting this on Katie, I'm putting this mainly on the writers, and how they write some of the scenes with Lena, so, some of them are really good, like I said, I, I really did enjoy this episode, but I don't know about that, you know, that's a typical CW thing, you lie, you die. Okay, so then it's two months later in another, you know, flash forward, but flashback, because it's in the past, we got Raoul back in it as Jack, and Lena is leaving him and Metropolis to go to National City, and it's at the time of the Myriad attack, and at the same time... Andrea meets Rip Raw for the first time, obviously Russell, as he's normally known as, and so that's when they start sort of hitting it off, and, you know, then they get on, and they have a relationship, and so then we go three years ago, Supergirl and Superman, you remember season two, episode one, and episode two, the Superman episode, that was a great callback, nice seeing it on the TV screen, and so we have old Kara in season two's costume, played by current day Melissa, which was just fantastic to see because I love season two. It's one of my favorite seasons in DC TV, and it's just really nostalgic, especially some of these scenes, specifically with Kara, because obviously you recognize the clothing. Oh, she was wearing that in that episode and everything like that. So yeah, just really nice to see some of these season two flashback scenes. And so, also we have the first few scenes, Lena kills off, you know, her friendship with Kara, you know, Kara tries to reach out to her, and that scene was like, what the hell, okay, so we didn't see this before, wow, but anyway, so they start hitting it off, and you know, everything goes well with those two, eventually, and so this is when Andrea meets the Leviathan lady for the first time, she must pay back what she was once told, and so they are controlling and manipulating her, and she is forced to kill this guy, so she has to do it, you know, otherwise, you know, it's not going to work out. Okay, so then we have Season 2 Kara again, and she's got the notably Season 2 slash Season 1 hair, where it's all sort of more wavy and everything like that. So, again, very nostalgic to see. So she's there with Lena, and they finally become friends. A very sweet moment between Kara, Lena, but also food. Great stuff. Alright, so then we have Russell and Andrea as he first finds out about the blood, so he finds out basically about what she's been doing about Leviathan, and then I got scared the shit out of by the Leviathan lady just popping up behind, you know, that really got me, like, I was not expecting that, so she scared the shit out of me, great scene, really liked it, and so they try and, you know, kill Russell because he's found out about Leviathan, but then they actually take him in because Andrea convinces them, and so they try to mutate Rip Roar and, you know, change him. And it was quite an emotional scene. Like I said, I, I do really like Andrea. I think Andrea was quite good in this episode. I, she had some ups and downs, a bit like Lena. But she was very good. I, I really did like it. And so basically what we can get out of that, this is, 
you know, her reaching, you know, her very final option to save her boyfriend, basically, and, you know, he became something else, you know, not himself. And we have Lex's flashbacks again to last season's finale. We have Lena, she finds out about Lex, Supergirl and Andrea via reports, and so she finds out, obviously, that Andrea's back, and then Lena is revealed, uses Andrea and Kara for her villainous needs. She sells Catco, obviously in spite of Kara, but also to use Andrea. What a prick. I'm sorry, but this episode really, really makes her look like a villain. I'm talking about Lena here. And it makes Andrea, you know, look like not a bad person because she's being forced to do this, even though she's still committing these atrocities. However, Lena... Man, you are in the shit right now because you are going full villain. You are going full Lex Luthor. You are manipulating your friend, Andrea, your past friend, and also your current friend, Kara. You know, there is this bit where Andrea needs to get into the DEO and she calls on Supergirl to let her do that. Obviously, Andrea is there with good intentions. However, Lena is still manipulating Kara and that's still very very bad for her image and obviously when Kara finds out in the next few episodes as it's been revealed you know Nina's gonna be in the shit and I think it's kind of gonna be quite satisfying I guess because we keep on seeing this stuff with Lena like I have nothing against Lena but like she's really a villain that's not a bad thing that's not a bad thing at all but let's move on so Kara talks to Russell, and it's very similar to that scene with Monel, if you remember, back when Kara was talking to him in the cell back in season two. It reminded me of that. That was a quite nostalgic moment. This episode is very nostalgic. And so he reveals that Leviathan is the one in control of him. So Supergirl now knows about that. That's going to be a big revelation that they're going to be dealing with, trying to figure out who is Leviathan. And obviously they will eventually figure out this is got something to do with Lena, it's got something to do with all of the stuff happening in National City right now. So yeah, talking about the scene that I was talking about, so Andrea breaks into the DEO with the help of Lena, and so Supergirl flies out to Lena, Lena has been supposedly attacked but she's set up, and so she gets in, Andrea gets in, and everyone is frozen apart from Alex. I'm not sure why Alex wasn't, but you know, maybe that's a plot hole or something, but anyway, so she uses the sort of dampening chips, and anyway, so Brainy attacks her because he's been taken over, and then you get a fight between Alex and Akrata briefly, Jean figures out that, yeah, mm, this looks like, you know, my brother, my brother, I got that psychic sense that connects it, it's exactly the same as Malafaic, but they don't realise who it actually is, obviously, we know it's Lena, and that's going to be a big revelation that she has taken Malefic and manipulated him for her own good to control people. That is villainous. Okay, so let's move on to the final few things about this episode. So she full on goes villain. And this is the bit where I was like, yeah, Lena is a villain right now. Or she is so close to being one. Because she threatens and actually makes Russell put a scalpel up to his throat. She's threatening to fucking kill him. That is villainous. And so, yeah, at that point I was like, damn, she is a pure villain right now. And so Lena has the medallion because Andrea gives it up to her and she gonna get messed up by Leviathan because, you know, this medallion by the end of the episode, the ending reveals it means Leviathan. So there is some sort of connection to that necklace, to that sort of um, signage on it to the actual corporation and this thing is ancient so is Leviathan an ancient organization I think so and they can pop up anywhere like what is going on with that and so just before the end of this episode we got Russell he gets shot by Leviathan he's dead and Akrata still has her powers so Andrea has her powers and Lena is going to become a suspect very soon so yeah that's about it for this video, it's been a bit longer, and there was a lot to talk about in this episode, I very much did like it, the only bits I didn't really like was some of the more melodramatic and over the top moments with Lena specifically, but also a few scenes with Andrea, but otherwise apart from that, very solid episode, really liked it, loved the flashbacks, that was definitely the best bit, there wasn't much Supergirl in present day, but that's fine, whatever. 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.